Abyssal Dead Spaces are a great way of making ISK in EVE Online. They scale up really quite quickly and aggressively, meaning there is always something that you can be doing to improve, and new and more difficult challenges lying ahead. Now, when I've covered Abyssal Dead Spaces on this channel previously, I've primarily focused on missile ships, but obviously not everyone flies missiles, and a lot of you have been asking for me to cover various different alternative options. In today's video, then, I'm going to be showcasing the Kaldari Cormorant. This is a destroyer that any Kaldari player will get as part of the Agent Career missions early on. The fit that we're going to be showcasing is really cheap, and it runs tranquil exotic filaments really quickly and easily, and the exotic are just that little bit cheaper than the electrics, meaning you can make that little bit more isk than if you were trying to run electrical filaments. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video I'm going to be showcasing how to fit and use the Kaldari Cormorant Destroyer for Tranquil Exotic Filaments. These are a great way to get ISK early on as a new player, and what makes the Cormorant so special is that you can get these for free really easily. If you started as a Kaldari Capsuleer, then your career agent missions early on, the Enforcer branch, will give you a Cormorant for free at the completion of the final mission. Now, if you've already lost that Cormorant, or if you weren't Kaldari, you can still run the agent career missions from any of the three different systems that those are found in. So navigate to either Todaki, Kisago or Amson, and I will put those names in the description for the spelling as well. Navigate to those, do the Enforcer branch, and you will get a free Cormorant at the end. Now, of course, you can just buy one off the market, but hey, when there's three available for free in the game, you may as well go and grab them, right? Now, the other way that you can really boost this forward for yourself as a new player is by using my referral code in the description down below. You click a link, you then log in with your EVE account, and the game will give you one million free skill points. You can do this on existing accounts as well, as long as you haven't previously used a referral code. You can only use one referral code. If you haven't used it, go into the description and click that link and earn yourself a million free skill points. Now to get the rest of the stuff out of the way, whilst you're down there, please click like on the video, drop a comment letting me know how you get on with this ship, or if it's one that you've enjoyed using, perhaps you've got a slightly different fit to the one I'm going to be showcasing, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already for all things EVE Online, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support me making content like this, you can do so by heading to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar, or my Redbubble merchandise store. All of that is in the description. And if you're interested in Abyssal Dead Spaces, come join the Catskull Discord. You can even join the Catskull Corporation. We are always recruiting and looking for more pilots to join us. And of course, we've got Abyssal Dead Space to uh, talks going on in that Discord as well, so you can learn more about this awesome form of content. Anyway, with all of that said and done then, phew, these get long sometimes, let's jump into talking about the Kaldari Cormorant Destroyer running Tranquil Exotic Filaments. Now, I really love the look of the Cormorant. It's a really interesting looking ship. I love that sort of flat design to it with the turret pods on the side, the way that the wings fold up and down as it warps. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. And if you're wondering what skin it was I was showcasing earlier, that is the Ghost Bird, one of the few Ghost Bird skins I've been lucky enough to actually get in game. Um, one of my favorite skins, awesome, but tend to be super expensive on the market. Anyway, first of all, we need to understand what the Cormorant is. Then we're gonna talk about why it's useful for exotic filaments. Then we're going to go forward and showcase the fit, then demonstrate it in action. So first of all, the ship. Here we have the Cormorant's traits, its ship characteristics. Now it has a roll bonus of a 50% bonus to small hybrid turret optimal range. That means if you fit small hybrid turrets, whether that's blasters or railguns, to a Cormorant, they get additional optimal range just for being on the ship. Now, you then get bonuses from Kaldari Destroyer. For each level of Kaldari Destroyer you have, you have a 10% bonus to small hybrid turret tracking speed, which means those turrets hit a little bit better, and a 10% bonus to small hybrid turret optimal range. So you get some really nice range off this and some really good tracking. So it's nice, you can hit from a long distance, and you can hit things that are slightly faster moving than you normally would. You'll note that there aren't much in the way of damage bonuses, in fact there aren't any damage bonuses there at all, but that's made up for by the fact that this has a lot of high slots. We have a whopping 7 high slots here just for turrets, 8 high slots in total, 7 turret hardpoints, one that we can fit a launcher in, and we'll talk about the fitting later on. 
Looking at the stats here of the Cormorant, looking at the different sort of shield and armor and things like that, you'll notice this is definitely a shield tank ship. If you're a Kaldari pilot looking to fly this, then you are going to want to not just have obviously Kaldari Destroyer, you're going to want small hybrid turret skills, and you're going to want shield skills to support this as well. Navigation, not so important on this one, but definitely get those shield skills up, those Kaldari uh, Destroyer skills up, and the hybrid turret skills up. The fit that we're going to be showcasing is a basic starting point for the ship, but you can definitely upgrade it further, and then this will also run Tech 1 exotics, the Calm exotic filaments as well. But again, we're focusing on the Tranquils today just to get you started. Alright, so it's actually time to now break down the fit and talk about how this works. I will have a copy of the fit in the description down below, so you can copy and paste that into the game and simulate it and see how it works with your skills. You can mess around with it and it's an easy way to then just drive to Jeta or Dodixie or Heck or wherever you want to go and buy all the bits that you need. Now, of course, we know that the Cormorant is a shield tank ship primarily, and it uses hybrid turrets, so that's what we're going to start with. We know that we've got eight high slots, and seven of those are going to be turret hardpoints, therefore we're going to fit those with turrets. In this case, 125mm prototype Gauss guns. These are the ones I would recommend. They've got decent tracking, decent range. You can upgrade this to Tech 2 when you get the skills, and that will help you run the Tech 1 exotic abyssals, but ultimately, this is the starting point. I would save up and get these prototype Gauss. Don't just go for the, you know, the, the Gauss gun ones or whatever. They're, they're not going to be good enough for really for the damage and that that you need to be able to output for this particular run. Now, I'm running Kaldari Navy Antimatter Charge because this gives a really nice balance of thermal and kinetic damage. You can see 34 HP of kinetic damage per shot, 24 of thermal. This is with an optimal range of 15 kilometers, fall off to 21. That's a 6 kilometer fall off adjustment. Therefore, you can sort of hit things out to 27, but you really want to start, you know, start firing once they hit 27 kilometers. But as they get closer, you're going to start to do more and more damage, and you're going to want to orbit around 14, 15 kilometers for the most part. Now this does leave us with an empty high slot. For this one I've gone for a TE-2100 Ample Light Missile Launcher, again with Kaldari Navy Scourge Light Missiles. You do want Scourge Light Missiles for this, you know, predominantly, because they do kinetic damage, and remember being in an exotic filament, the enemies are weaker to kinetic damage, therefore those are the missiles we want to use. Now, like when th with the ammo here, the antimatter Kaldari Navy antimatter charges, Kaldari Navy scourge missiles, you don't necessarily have to go for Kaldari Navy, but it does increase your damage quite considerably to do so. It does obviously also increase your costs, so you just need to weigh up how much ISK you have on hand to buy the ammunition and replenish it, and see how it kind of alters your clear time. If you're happy with the clear times using standard ammo, go for it. If you want to upgrade to the Navy issue ammo, you're going to clear a lot faster, and that should help you earn more ISK per hour. And that is always, you know, what we're looking for, right? For the mid-slots, because we're a shield tank ship, I've gone for two small FS9 regolith compact shield extenders. These increase the amount of shield hit points available to your ship. So, for example, if I were to simulate here, you can see I've got a defense here of 6,583. If I were to put these offline, you'll see that I've now only got a defense of 4,592. This just gives us a bigger shield tank. You'll also notice that this gives us a different passive shield recharge rate. The bigger your shields, the faster they recharge, essentially. So you kind of get more hit points back per second. The actual recharge time is exactly the same. Going from 0 to 100% shields is the same. So the bigger your shields are, the more you, you, you still heal the same percentage per second. You've still got the same overall recovery rate, but it's going to be more hit points per second. It's an important thing to remember when it comes to shields tanking and again I will have a video soon on how the different types of tanking work and we'll talk in depth there more about how passive shield tanking works. Now the Cormoran is a fairly slow ship. You'll see that its standard movement here is about 312.5 meters per second with the skills I currently have. So I've put in a standard one mega newton afterburner here. You could go for something a bit better like a, an enduring or whatever. Um, this will give us 606.5. It allows us to move a little bit faster, get through that uh, abyssal dead space, move to the biocompletification, loot things and all that as we go. 
For the low slots then, because we're using railguns, two magnetic field stabilizer ones, just increase the DPS. So you can see we've got 206.7 DPS on total there. If I were to put both of these offline, that drops to 159.3. Now, it is absolutely vital you have at least 120 DPS for a Tranquil Abyssal, otherwise the Disparo troop rooms will just completely wreck you. But obviously, the more damage you can do, the faster you're going to clear those sites. Finally then, let's talk about the rigs. I've got on here small core defense field extender one, small EM shield reinforcer one, and a small warhead calefaction catalyst one. Basically, this actually helps us just increase the amount of damage this missile is doing. You can go for the hybrid turret one here. I've gone for a, catal uh, a calefaction catalyst because essentially I tend to use the missile to shoot the loot cache and this just helps it kill that cache in one shot. So I can just launch one missile, pop that cache, move to it, loot it, move on. Um, of course, of course, you can go for the, uh, the the hybrid turret calefaction catalyst there instead, not calefaction catalyst, uh, collision accelerator there instead. It will give you better overall DPS, but that's why I've got that one. Entirely up to you which you go for. The core defense field extender, again, like the shield extenders, increase our overall hit points. And the EM shield reinforcer just means we take slightly less damage from electromagnetic uh, forms of damage types by increasing our EM resistance. There are quite a few enemies in Abyssal Dead Spaces that do electromagnetic damage, and we have fairly weak shields. Like, again, if I were to turn this off or destroy it, you'll see we have no resistance to EM damage, which means if someone hits you for 1,000 electromagnetic damage, they are hitting you for the full 1,000. Whereas, if we fit that back on there and re-simulate, we've now got 30% shield electromagnetic damage resistance, meaning that, th that 1,000 damage is actually only going to be 700. It's a significant increase to our survivability. We are cap stable with this fit, which means we can have everything running at all times and not worry about running out of capacitor. We're also fairly cap stable, nice and high 70% sustainable there with a really good 3.4 excess capacitor recharge rate, nice delta there and a 45.3% capacitor uh, like max recharge rate. This means ultimately we can actually get muted a few times and we will still remain capacitor stable. We don't have to worry about drones, which is quite nice. It's just fly, shoot, loot, next room. Anyway, all that said and done, again, the fit is in the description. Let's actually showcase this in action, shall we? So here I am, undocked in space at a safe point. Now, essentially what you need to do at this point is make sure you're in a fleet, then use your Tranquil Exotic Filaments. You'll need at least two of them. You can see I've got 10 in my hold, which means I can do essentially five runs before I have to go back. You activate them, make sure it's set to the two destroyers, and when you activate it, you will get this Abyssal Trace open. Do be aware that other players can scan these down. They can wait outside them if you're in dangerous space. So do bear that in mind that when you come out, you may end up getting jumped. Use it the same way you would a Stargate, you'll get the point and the alert saying you've got 20 minutes. Activate, jump in, timer starts. Here we are in the overview, first thing I'm going to do is start to orbit towards the Triglavian Biocompetitive Cache. I have my orbit set at 5 kilometers, but you can easily set to 15 or whatever. Then we're going to start locking onto things as we come into range. The first room that we've got here has a striking Damovic. This is a Triglavian frigate. As it deals damage to you, that damage will increase. Every time it shoots at you, its damage starts to spool up. So we want to kill this fairly quickly. They're not too difficult to hit. You can see I've got my uh, the, the railguns going after the striking Damovic, whilst my missiles are going after the biocompetitive cache. And annoyingly, having said the reason that I put that entire rig on there is to help with the missile, you'll see, of course, that completely failed twice on this. It normally takes it out in one hit, but for some reason here it's taking multiple. There we go. Anyway, the Damovic is now down. You'll see I am literally flying in a straight line towards the cache. The cache has been destroyed. We're now going to right click that or use the contextual menu, whatever, to open cargo. We're going to start to drift towards that cache. You'll notice there is a bright thing pulsing in the difference distance here. This is a kind of special effect that if you get close to it, will do different things. We don't need to really worry about these in this particular run. I'm not going to go into the full details there. Now you'll notice that as we get close to the cache here, the loot will appear in the bottom right. You can then click, 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 or as I've recently learned, you can just hit enter. Hitting enter will loot all when it opens up in your inventory. 
Now, with all of the enemies in this room cleared, the gate is now open. We want to get the loot first because you can never go backwards in an abyssal. Once you leave this room, you are gone for good. We're now going to gradually drift towards the gate here. You can see that even with the afterburner running, the Cormorant is not the fastest moving of ships. It does take a little bit of time, which is why essentially when you enter a room, your best bet is to just immediately head to the biocompetitive loot cache so that you can destroy it, loot it, and move into the next room. So here we are now coming into room number two. Let's see what enemies we have and how this is going to work. Cool. So this time around, again, biocombative loot cache and a Lucid Aegis. Now, Lucid Aegis is a particular type of frigate. It is a sleeper. Um, it's normally got Omni Resists, but obviously for being in a Firestorm, it's going to be slightly lower resists to Kinetic. Good news for us, everything's Kinetic. Once it's in range, we lock onto it. So again, usual thing, approach and orbit the biocombative loot cache, and then just shoot at the enemies as we come into range. Now again, 31 kilometers is the maximum range we can be hitting at with the uh, antimatter charge. The missiles do have slightly longer range, but again, I tend to wait until we're nice and close. You can also see I'm getting some beautiful lag spikes at this point. This is the wonderful thing of playing EVE Online in Zimbabwe. Even when our internet's good, it's still awful. As you can see here, it took a long time for my modules to activate and the footage is kind of jumping all over the place. But I've left that in and I've chosen this one anyway because I think it's interesting to show these enemies and how quickly they can and will go down and also just to showcase that even with really bad lag you can just run these sites so simply this is a low stress way of running an abyssal dead space so again, with the biocompetitive loot cache destroyed, we are going to move towards the wreck. And again, you can see, you watched me uh, like go to loot that. Look at the lag there, how long that actually took my ship to change course and go to you know actually open the cargo. We're gonna loot everything here. What do we get? A load of, oh, some tranquil dark filaments as well. That's nice, I do run darks in some of my other ships. And now we're gonna activate the gate. Looks like the internet's working a little bit better for me now as that responded fairly quickly. There we are, drift through the wreckage, to the transfer conduit, and onto room three. It's a good idea as well to get into the habit of reloading on your way to the gate, because otherwise you're just going in with slightly less ammo for the next room, and that means you may end up having to reload partway through shooting an enemy. Just reloading when you've got nothing else to do, it's a good habit to get into. Anyway, let's stack all there. Final room here is a Skybreaker Disparu Troop. These are the Eden Comp ships, and one of the ones that a lot of people tend to be a little bit scared of, because these are the DPS check. These things do a lot of damage, and they do repair themselves quite heavily as well. So we're going to do the same thing we normally do, move towards the biocompetitive cache, set that orbit for it, and then start shooting the Disparu Troop. You'll see I am still going for the loot cache here, even with the missiles, because the primary part of my damage is going from the, uh, the antimatter charges and the railguns there, those Gauss cannons, and you'll see that it's still pulling it down quite nicely. You'll also notice that despite this being a passive fit, we're having no issues at all with our tank. Even the Disparu troop here, whilst it's doing a good amount of damage to us, it's still not enough to make this at all scary. There we are, biocompetitive loot cache down. Let's start to drift towards that and take out that Disparu troop nice and easily. There it goes. And that's the Abyssal Dead Space done. Just need to loot the cache, move to the exit, and that's the entire run. How easy is that? And if you look at the clock in the uh, top right there, you can see it's taken a little over five minutes. Now, the 6.4 million that you can see in the uh, in, in the loot window on the left hand side is a little bit deceiving because I have done a couple of, well, I've done a run already at this point. This is the second run I've done in this particular ship. Um, and obviously that includes the antimatter charges as well. But you will find that this is good isk uh, for this kind of tier where you are in the game. The Cormorant itself is nice and cheap and you'll make the cost of the Cormorant back in about four runs. So as long as you survive the first four runs, the Cormorant has more than paid for itself. In fact, I think it was three runs for this one to pay for itself. Nice and straightforward. Everything after that becomes pure profit. Remember to reload between rooms. Otherwise, we're now going to exit this particular abyssal dead space. We will wait a few seconds for the trade to disappear, then we'll launch the next filament and go again. I actually ran about four, uh, about six, seven of these sites, 14 traces worth, 14 filaments worth, for the simple fact that I kept actually getting tranquil exotic filaments as loot from some of these uh, sites. 
So I had 10 in my hold, I ran those, and by the end of the time I'd used all 10 of those, I'd gained about another four, um, so it was worth jumping in and doing a few more. Anyway, you see there, use Tranquil Exotic Filament, activate for Fleet, and then in we go for round two in another Exotic Filament. Sometimes it doesn't activate, you see there, it takes a little bit of time, that's just my internet and everything being awful out here in Zimbabwe. But there we go, awesome. Not to stop my ship, right click the wrong thing. Use the trace in the overview if you have to. Activate gate, in we go and off for another Abyssal Filament. Hopefully that helps folks, hopefully that gives you an understanding of how an Abyssal Dead Space Exotic can work with this Cormorant. Really simple, just drift towards the biocompetitive loot cache and shoot the enemies. The Tranquils are so straightforward that you really don't need much more than that. You've got more than enough DPS, more than enough tank, that as long as you're not flying it like a complete moron, you'll find that it goes really, really quickly. Like here, all I need to do is shoot that to seller, then the loot cache, then move to the next room. Rinse and repeat. Take a screenshot because it looks awesome. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end. The fit is linked in the description down below. Remember, I would love to hear what kind of fit you come up with, how you change that, how you make it your own. If you have a tier one fit that you run with this or a different type of fit altogether, let me know in the comment section down below or come join the Catskull Discord. Would love to hear how you're getting on with this kind of content and what kind of stuff you're running. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden. More screenshots because look how pretty.